three, two, one. Engine ignition and off. Atlas V rocket LRO Elacross, America's first step of a land return to the moon. Five days after launch, Elcross and the attached Centaur will execute flyby of the moon. They will then enter into several large looping orbits around the Earth for the next few months of the mission. We will use this time to check instrument calibration and refine our trajectory for lunar impact. About seven hours before the impact, the Shepard spacecraft will separate from the Centaur and position itself to observe the impact at the south pole of the moon. For the next four minutes after the impact of the Centaur, we will receive real-time data as the Shepherding spacecraft flies through the plume and scans the ejecta for signs of water. The Shepherding spacecraft will then impact the moon, creating a second plume of lunar dust. Both impacts will be closely observed by professional astronomers on the Earth using some of the world's greatest observatories. We also believe there is a chance that the impact plume may be visible in 10 to 12 inch telescopes. We are encouraging both professional and backyard astronomers to participate and contribute their observations to this exciting mission. It separated approximately 6.50 p.m. last night and there were many relieved faces at that point too. So you hear, see here an animation of the spacecraft. Our instruments actually are pointed in the opposite direction, so we have, uh, we have to flip it over or do a 180 so that we'd actually view the centaur that floats away. And the cameras begin to turn on about 3 minutes 40 seconds after we did that flip. And here you see some pictures, our picture from our near infrared, mid infrared cameras. They actually gave us the best look at the centaur as it was floating uh, in That's space. gorgeous. And that <laughs> movement is actually caused by the attitude control system of the spacecraft trying to keep attitude right there. Measure, take it with is what we want to measure. Yeah. So we also perform what we call, um, uh, we did a swing by the moon and we also looked back and did Earth looks at the moon. We did that first to uh, verify the performance of our... So you have two minutes to be in sequence one. Uh, flight director with no cross is that correct? One more flight director. It's only going to get bigger. Copy that. Depends on the material composition of the crater floor. A very bright flash means that we've most likely hit a rocky surface. Asking Research Center, let us switch to the Elcross Mission Control Room and uh, follow in what's going on there. Because they have such long lives, if something breaks on the spacecraft, they have to have a backup in order to keep going. And all the uh, observatories on both sides of the Pacific that are participating with us right now. Um, I'd like to say thanks to the hundreds of students who are watching this morning who directly participated in the Elcross mission through the Goldstone Apple Valley Radio Telescope Project. Right. These Copy, not yet. Stand by. Another option is dropping all the yeah, copy that. I'm about to tell him to do that. Photographs. There's some images. Can you tell us what we're looking at? I believe these are near and uh, well, that's mid. The, that's the visible camera. This is the right visible there. camera? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I believe we have a, a near IR and a, a thermal IR. Um, and the judge of thermal. There we that's go. That, well, that's okay. the mid infrared there. That's getting the uh, yeah. temperatures. Yeah. As you see at the surface of the moon. There's some ambiguous interpretations, and that, moreover, there are multiple theories that can account for the observation that Luna Prospector actually saw, which is excess hydrogen. And so, L cross and the impact uh, coming up in a few moments here should provide the best data yet nature of excess hydrogen at the lunar poles. So, let me remind the, uh, the uh, listeners that there are four science objectives for the L cross mission. I'll just give them very briefly. Number one, confirm the presence or absence of water in permanently shadowed regions near the lunar poles. Second, to identify the molecular, molecular form of that hydrogen. Third, to quantify the amount of water or to establish a meaningful upper limit. And fourth, to characterize the lunar regolith or the dirt that is thrown up uh, in the impact process. Challenge the compression algorithms. Uh, to bring them down under the one megabit per second data stream. And its purpose is to capture the flash event, uh, which is a very rapid. Uh, All stations flight, five minutes to Centaur impact. The spacecraft is getting very close to the moon now, and you'll see the uh, target point and the uh, 
shattered region towards the center of the imagery. Uh, that is Cabeus with the uh, crater rim and the mountainous region there on the top uh, causing the shadow that uh, spreads over a uh, portion of the crater floor. The centaur will be targeting that uh, shattered region where we expect uh, ice is most likely to last seconds of the uh, shepherding spacecraft trajectory as it approaches the lunar surface. We are seeing very small craters within the crater. We, we confirm a thermal signature of the crater. Our mirror our cameras. Over. Copy science. We just All received light shepherding spacecraft impact. Stations report LOS. The uh, ground stations at Goldstone just reported a Last track is 1135.054 seconds. The shepherding spacecraft has hit the surface of the moon, and this marks the end of the L-Cross uh, flight mission.